Today we we start lesson one. The topic is we live only once. How to live well and make it worthwhile. That's the topic. Stop, stop. <laughs> no, no, okay, there. Okay. Did they in, in Toronto, there are hundreds and thousands of meetup groups, okay? Now, this meetup group is, is unique because it is about life, right? About life. The fact that you're here indicates that you think life is a serious business. Right? Life is, life is value. So usually, when we talk about life, we talk about two kinds of questions. One is about the big questions about human existence, the big questions. Now, people might not uh, articulate about the big questions, but they do think about that. For example, what does it mean of life? What does it mean of, of, of death? What does it mean of suffering? Why is it bad thing happen to good people? But why there's so much evil in the world? Oppression, abuse, and discrimination. Why are so many natural disasters which are devastating and, and, and deadly? So people do wrestle with, with this question. People ask, well, if there is God, if there is God who is compassionate and all powerful, what, what does He allow? You know, innocent people, good people, to suffer. So people do rest of these questions. And, and how we answer those questions, <coughs> we expect how we live. So, but, but most people will are wrestling with, with the second type of question, that is, what the meaning in my life, right? They did not concern about the big philosophical questions about human existence. They concern this poor me, right? About, about my hopes, my fears, about my aspirations and, and frustrations, disappointments, about my tears and my joy, and about wh why am I stuck in a, in a, in a dead end job? Why am why I'm trapped in a, uh, in a uh, loveless marriage. What what, what my children gone 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 astray? Uh, why do you have cancer? Okay, I have cancer, right? I'm still here. Thank God, right? So so those are questions people ask about about their own lives. And how can I make the most of my life, right? So, so these are some things that, that we'll be discussing in, in, in this course. Okay. Now, this is some of the people's views about life. And if I ask you about what's your view about life, some people say, well, life is a gift from God to be enjoyed with gratitude, right? Some people say, well, Life is a, it's what? A game. A game, yeah. You know, a game. You, know, you gamble. You, you, know, you gamble, yeah. And what else, what else do you think about life? Uh, life, most commonly, most people say life is a journey or an adventure, right? And some people say, well, life is a bird, home are fine, right? In Cantonese, it's a home are fine. Oh, life is trouble. You have to bear and endure, right? Life, life is bird. What else do you think about life? See, your view about life as a whole also affects how you live. So hopefully, by the end of the course, you have a much more positive outlook on life. And when people ask you, what was life? You can give a more positive uh, answer rather than say, oh, life is trouble, life is a burden, no, life is struggle. And uh, now, here, I try to break down for you, okay, 
if you ask the question, what makes life worth living? Because you only live once, right? And uh, what makes life worth living? Actually, there are five related questions. The, the first question is that we live only once, we better make it right the first time. There's no rehearsal in life. Now, you cannot say, I go back. Go back to my mother tell me and then be born again. Uh, <laughs> right? Start all again. You, you can't let go once. So, so you better get it right. You better marry the right person, get the right job, and give birth to the right children. <laughs> you can't say that. Right. <laughs> 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 so you better get it right the first time, right? And the, the second thing is that life is finite, life is short. So what do you make the most of it? Now, this is interesting about finding, okay? About two weeks ago, there was a survey about Toronto's young people, like your age, uh, <laughs> <laughs> high school age, high school, 16, 17. Do you, do you know that? People ask them, what do you do most of the time? Say, 64% of young people, teenagers, say, well, we are lazy, we do nothing. 64%. They say they do nothing. They just uh, watch on TV, listen to music, uh, chit-chatting. They admit that they are lazy. Now, the Chinese saying that that uh, uh, in the Chinese saying, may I say Chinese? Xiu ni bao nou lei, you know? Lou dai tu. Lou dai xiang bu. Okay. 少年不努力啊，老。老大徒伤悲。那那现在 ，if you do not work hard, when get old, you regret, right? But life is short. They don't realize this. They say, oh, what? I'm in 16, 17. I have a whole life ahead of me. You know, why, why bother now? I can always work harder later, but life goes by so quickly. Not too long ago, I was her age. <laughs> right? Long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Not to me. Not to me. And I still remember, you know, I was still just as lively from your age. And not too long ago, she was a teenager, 16, 17. Not the father, right? Not too long ago, he was a high school kid, right? Well, just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so, the idea is that life is short. You know, you, you, you know, most people will give a fortune to buy one extra year of life. You know that? Mm -hmm. If you go, oh, oh, I'm dying of cancer, I'm dying. You even have uh, one month, three months to live. People say, well, what can I do to longer? Two more years, three more years. I will, I will skip. I will give all my money. I will spend all my money to find a cure to extend my life. But when they're younger, what, what do they think about that? Right? What do they think about that? But life is short, right? The third thing is that Life of many opportunities, how do you make the right choice? Let's think about that. Okay? If you would live forever, then you don't worry about making the wrong choice, right? You marry the wrong woman, you marry again. <laughs> you get the wrong job, it's all over again. But, but life is short. So you have to, if you choose A, you can have B. If I marry her, I will say no to all the other girls. <laughs> <laughs> One would hope so. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, so, <laughs> right? You, you, uh, uh, Teresa married him. She gets stuck. Yes, she knows all the other guys, right? <laughs> you know? I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's because if you choose A, yes, yeah, close or B, right? Because you have to be very careful about your choices, right? Uh, so if you make the right choice, then you like to work more sleeping, then you make the wrong choice.
The fourth one is that is a constant struggle and how to overcome because it doesn't matter how rich you are. Steve Jobs, you know, very rich. He is he trans cancer, right, right? And it doesn't matter how rich, how how famous and there's always troubles in life. Right? And John Edward, right? You to be way up in the world, a candidate for president, and now he might go to jail. So there's always trouble. So you don't know how, how to navigate through troubled waters. If you do not know how to overcome uh, the trials and tribulations in your life, and then you'll be quite miserable. It's so simple. So you have to learn a way. You have a way to rise above your trouble. And uh, lastly, everybody wants a better life. How to achieve it? The fact that you're here indicate that you know, at the back of your mind, you say, "Well, my life could be better. Right? My life could be better." My life could be less boring. My life could be more exciting. My life could be more hopeful. Uh, my marriage could be better. Uh, my health could be better. I mean, there's hope, right? Everyone's hope. Hope is oxygen. Without hope, we wither. So, so, so this question actually involves five related questions. Here you are, my real self, okay? and here you, your ideal self, you want to be better. Does it, does it describe you? Is it, no? So what, 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 can, what do you like to be? If you are here, you want to go up or go down? I, 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 I think it's the terminology. Okay, no, okay. picture, this picture, okay? So how will you picture yourself? Here we are, here you are. Okay. Do you want to improve yourself? For me, those type of words don't work for me. Okay. I, they, what, what I think life is about is learning to evolve and to be all that you are already and to recognize and realize that in the world. Okay. So it isn't about better. I don't think that those kind of words really help us okay. in terms of, but that's just me. That's Okay, mine. so your life is. Uh, yes. Going in cycles? Uh, so, more, more of a spiral, I would think. Spiral, okay. okay. Yeah. There are people saying that way, yeah. There are people saying, this is more Western, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're more Western thinking, right? Mm -hmm. They're linear, right? Very Go much so. Yeah. They are, they are uh, in, in India, they have, you know, like going spiral, cycle. Well, you know, spiral is still going up, Buddha. Well, it's an oscillation. It's I, I, yeah. I don't see it as linear or moving from one place. So this is just a graphic representation, okay? Yeah. All right. Sorry, I'm late, Oh, dimple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Are you here as the first meetup? This is my first. This is the first one. Okay. 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 Let's continue. This is most of our accept rules, okay? Most of our want to be improve themselves, okay? Uh, so the exception people say well, uh, you know, I don't want to be go out for better. Well, the point okay? is so uh, huh? you know you said your life is a constant struggle. How to overcome obstacles uh, is the question. Um, are we not meant to be on earth to endure and to have lots of struggles? Is that not the purpose of life? If I had no struggles, I'd have no character. So this is a good thing. Yeah, good thing, yeah. 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 But, but, but God wants us to overcome, not be defeated, right? Well, why should you be defeated if God is in you? You won't be defeated. Yeah, yeah. But, but
but not everybody. But you will still suffer. Yeah. But not everybody. But there, there are people who feel defeated by life. There are people. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, some a people are. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, people, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. I, I get the point. It's just that yeah, 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 for, for, for me, that that kind well, that's of fine. That's work. <laughs> this will apply to you. Know, I'll ask all my students. I've talked for many years. Okay? Sure, sure. Most students want to. I'm happy with my career. I want to be better. Okay. Sure, sure. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, people say I'm not happy with my income. I want to make more money. I mean, everybody want to better themselves. Okay. Yeah. That that's simply uh, maybe not American phenomenon. Okay, but but there is. Uh, Yeah, I can see it. Uh, let me let me gesture for you. Even though everybody want to better themselves, okay, everybody want to advance, advance the well-being of the society. Now this is very interesting. A graph about American and uh, Canada developed country and developing countries. It's very interesting. India, China, they all strive to catch up with America in terms of productivity, comfort, health. You know, it's very interesting graph, you know. India, China are catching up. They, have they not surpassed? <laughs> oh, they, they must surpass, okay. So, so what, whether you're an individual, or whether you are a society or a country, they all strive to better themselves, okay, improve their well-being. But I ask myself this question, okay. As an individual, as a country, Do we get better by making more money, by having more uh, crucial comforts, you know, by being stronger, stronger militarily than other countries? So th there's a mindset there that bigger is better, and stronger is better, faster is better, computer can be faster and faster, right? So there is a mindset. That just keep going up, going up, okay? That's a mindset, okay? She doesn't buy that, say, other people don't buy that, man. But this is a mindset, very really wrong. That's a, that's a secular mindset, okay? I'm not kidding. Everybody catch up with America. <laughs> but the reality, here, individuals say everything, but here's the reality now. There are four patterns, four uh, trajectory. Okay? You can see it. But I, I will use my hand again. <laughs> One pattern is flat. Huh? Flat. That means your life is, that pattern is a smooth sailing of ordinary or small up and downs or cyclical, but your life pretty well see that way. No major upheaval. Boring. Huh? Like boring. Boring. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like boring. Uh, you know, uh, uh, so, so, but that, that, in a way, if you know Chinese philosophy, most people in village in China, they, they, they want this life sometimes. They say, the ideal life is no trouble. The government doesn't give it trouble, no trouble, no, no sickness. Pimpin dan dan, ah, ah, pimpin dan dan, tap tap sa sa, ah, yeah, yeah. Ordinary, practical life, and you know they don't want to get rich or what. They just want to a family together, right? Uh, enjoy the simple pleasures of life, just like that. Ordinary life. So, for us, for most people, that's boring, but uh, some people enjoy that. You know, they don't want to get very rich or, or very famous. They don't want to spend time with their family eh? and their ordinary life. Uh, but still, you just think about, uh, is that, you know, you want to go to that, like that? We just think about what is our 
What all about? When I was very young, I watched a movie that really impressed me. I was about 11. The movie name is that, This is My Life. This is my life. It's a story about an old policeman who spent three, you know, spent most of the time on a beat. And then he retired. Retired. The, you know, the retired said, My life passed. What, what is, I, I, don't, I don't believe I really lived. I just go on beat every day, you know. Now I collect small pension, and I'm going to die. So he wondered what that's life all about. And another movie I've seen, you know, I'm a movie buff. Okay, that movie is called The Kill. It's a kill. This is a story about a civil servant in Japan. She was in Japan. He spent 30 years, day in, day out, go to office. You know, he's the department head, you know, like the senior civil servant. He will approve the application, right? He, every day, sun will shine, he never miss a day, he go to work, he read the application, he chop the application. And one day went to the hospital and did then you come. The doctor say, "You only have three months to live. You have the final stage of, of lung cancer." Or, you know. So his whole world went apart. So what do you mean? You have only three months to live, right? So what? What happened? He quit the job. He walk out the job. Take all the money out from the bank. He doesn't know how to spend the money. He doesn't know how to spend money to enjoy it. I mean, he just... Until one more he was wandering straight. In the evening, he ran into his young uh, assistant in the past. The assistant seemed to be so full of life, you know, so happy. He said, I'm so happy to meet you. And, uh, did start a conversation. And then the old man, you know, he's only, you know, 50 something, he's not that old. He talks to a young woman and says, Tell me, tell me, young lady, why are you so happy? Why are you so happy? If I were able to live one day, just one day as happy as you, before I die, I'll die without regret. Okay? Right? Only one day to be happy as you. So tell me. So the girl said, Well, I don't have much education, and uh, now I quit, I quit the civil servant job, and I work in a factory. So I made toys for children. So every time I make toys, I imagine all the children being so happy playing with the toys I make. So that gave me happiness. Okay? So all of a sudden, a, a, a light bulb turned up. I got it, I got it. He went back to his office, digging out, digging out the old application, the old application to convert a little, uh, little area of swamp into a, into a park for the children. But they would, they would, he would put it aside, right? He had too much trouble. He said, this, this will be my mission. So he spent the next two or three months advocating, championing for this project, going to different departments, bureaucracies, right? Any department, hygiene department, that department, that department. He spent three months struggling with that. At the end of the movie, he was a swing, the snow was falling. He died by himself. In the park, with snow falling down, if I happy. You know why? Because he was able to do something that, that's meaningful all his life. He worked. But no meaning he said, now I can see children playing in, in, the, in the playground. Now I'm able to bring joy and happiness to the neighborhood. So he died happy. So it's never too late to change that, right? Now, so they're flat, 
but you can still do small things, you can still make that meaningful. Another common saying is that you start well, you end poorly. Right? You, you work hard, you're very successful, very rich, and then you make a couple of terrible mistakes in your life. You end up in jail, or you lose all your money, you lost all your investment. You start well, you end poorly. And the third type, the lucky ones, the fortunate ones, they are able to, you know, live wisely, step by step, improving the, themselves, able to fulfill all their dreams. Okay. Now, not too many people are able to live that kind of life, not too many. I hope my, my you know, all of our children can be like that, right? Yeah, no major mishap, you know, they're able to on the right track, improve themselves, and live a happy life, live a good life, until the very end. But the most common one is like this, going well, and then something terrible happens. Major interruption. Blah, blah. From here, hit rock bottom. It could be it could be a disaster like a tsunami, right? If it earthquake, it could be, could be cancer, and could be abuse, and could be family falling apart because of divorce. You know, it, it could be any any kind of thing. Are you okay? okay. He's a strong man. He's a strong man. <laughs> Oh, oh no, it doesn't matter. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so where am I? I thought about the resilience. No. The, the, this is the hero's journey, right? You start well, and you got hit. And then you recover and then tell your story. Right? Then tell your story. This is the hero's journey. I mean, can be different tragedies, different kind of tragedies. But the pattern is the same. The hero's journey is always marked by a huge disruption. You know, sometimes, you know, it, some often some, some horrible thing can happen to anyone, right? But the key is to recover. Right? Recover. So there, there are four patterns. There may be other there may there may be other variations, okay? But these are just four common patterns. So any question? Okay, next slide. Now here is something I want you to be familiar with called ontological anxiety. Nobody, nobody likes anxiety, right? You know? But to be a human being, always face this anxiety. Ontological means anxiety about being. Okay, about living, about being. So here is the anxiety, okay? You are always confronted with two choices. Okay, two choices. One choice is the status quo. Continue the way you are. You don't change. No change. You are free of change. You don't change anything. You want life to go on the way it is until you die. You don't want to change. But if you choose the status quo, choose sameness, choose security, but you suffer the consequence. That is, you suffer from guilt, you suffer from regret. You know why you feel guilty? You feel guilty because you do not, you fail to become what you're meant to be. Everybody has no idea what, what, what you're meant to, to do, what you're meant to be, right? If you if you hang on to your job or hang on to something familiar, well that's not the happy that's not the happy life because you feel guilty for not becoming better, for not improving yourself, 
and you're left for regrets. I could have gone to school. I could have done this. I could have done that. But I didn't do any of those things. By the time when you are on death's bed, you say, oh, it's too late. So you, you live a life with regret. regret. Now the other one is that, okay, I want to make some changes in my life. Right? But that's not easy either. Do you know why? Because when you make changes, you take a chance, right? When you come here, everybody you don't know me, right? You take a chance. Good for you. Good for you. And Teresa, right? You take a chance on me, right? Do I scare you? No. Okay. You, you take a chance in life, right? Oh, Catherine knows me, so she's okay. <laughs> and Ruth all take a chance on me, right? <laughs> You see, you, 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 you walk in a stranger's house. You don't know what's waiting for you, right? You walk in, right? Oh, trust me, I wouldn't have walked in if I thought there was something wrong. <laughs> 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 but you, you don't know, right? Oh, I didn't know, but I could soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, uh, for me, it's a thing. When I started to meet up, I'm taking a chance, right? I have no idea who would come here. <laughs> could be a psychopath. Could be somebody who would rock her. Oh, 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 the ivory are so nice. I'm like, they, 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 could, they could rock me, right? I'm taking a chance. But life is about taking chances, right? You take a chance, I take a chance. See, if you want to, to, to start something new or, or, or trying to change, you suffer from the anxiety of, of the unknown. You don't know what will happen. You know? And also you suffer from the anxiety of uncertainty and the risk. Right? So either way, you have anxiety. Either way. Stay put, anxiety. Get up, anxiety. That's, that's life all about. So I always choose change. Take a chance. Take a chance. That's why I'm, 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 no, I'm no, not a gambler, I'm known as a rebel. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what a rebel is? A rebel? Yeah. Go ahead, give us your Explain. definition. Yeah. Okay, a rebel. Okay, it's a rebel. A rebel is someone who is dissatisfied with the status quo. See, life could be better. Change the status quo. When I do that, you get in trouble. I get in trouble all the time with authority. <laughs> I know. I get in trouble all the time. With authority, with church authorities, with academic authorities, with political authorities. You go to China, they lock me up. <laughs> <laughs> if you see something that this, the status quo is is there's injustice, there's wrong, okay? You want to change. The people in power would not like to change, right? They would shoot you down, right? But I choose the path of, of being a rebel. They're not, not everyone choose that, right? Then some people play safe. Then my poor wife would drag her along, you know? She would keep fighting. Calculated risks. Yes. There's a little bit of rebel in the a little bit of rebel, so I would always drag her along. But most of the time she went crazy. But I just kick and scream and just drag her along. <laughs> <laughs> I drag her to Texas, back to UV, back to the British Columbia, I travel all over the place now. And uh where are we now? The next one. Okay. Now here's something about about so the their their four patterns, okay? They make decisions. Now here is a great, how to pronounce that word? Dissolution? Dissolution? Yeah. Dissolution. I got it right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> some, some, I still have difficulty pronouncing that word, right? 
the great dissolution. Can I write on it? Uh, is it okay? <laughs> <laughs> the first thing is that, is there all there is to life? Now suppose, suppose you have set the aim for yourself, okay? You say, I want to be the richest man, I want to be one. But at the end, you ask yourself, is there, is that all there is to life? Okay. You know, you do you know how many lawyers are depressed? Do you know how many doctors kill themselves? Oh, it would be nice to be a lawyer. It's great to be a, to be a medical doctor. Dentist as well. Oh, dentist, yeah. Dentist, every day, look at the mouth. So <laughs> it's so depressing. <laughs> Her sister said. Her sister said. I'm sorry, I don't tell me. Can I say that? <laughs> every, I can't imagine myself looking at the mouth every day. <laughs> don't tell me about it. Eh? We all know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's it often that you, you think you want to go to the hill, but after you get there, Oh, you want to marry this guy? I want to marry him. Say, oh, is that that? Is that all? But, I mean, they always did this. What? What? Fight? What? Get what you want. You, will, you realize the reality is, is not as good as you imagine, right? I remember that one of my sis, one of my recent assistant, she was in love, and she married this, this great engineer from Queen's University, and then after two months of marriage. She told me, I feel so miserable in my marriage. If I knew you married was like that, I would not have to have married. <laughs> because he's very bossy, very controlling, you know. He's an engineer, right? Control everything. He control everything. Make her feel miserable. So he confided in me and said, you know, so I'll say, don't worry, I'll fix him. I'm just joking. <laughs> and uh, the other one is that, yeah, the same thing. This, if this success, why well, I'm so miserable or so big. And finally, King Solomon, the rich man, the smartest guy, the king of Israel, he said, he conclusion, okay? He lied. He said, he, 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 he has tried everything. Success, wealth, wisdom, and power, everything under the sun. And then he said, without God, if that's all you got everything, everything in the world. The conclusion is that vanity of vanity, all is vanity. That's the conclusion. <laughs> so so th there's something that you make in the whole wide world, you could lose your soul, right? You know, you may, at the end you might say vanity, every vanity. Now the next slide we talk about the great deception. Okay? Now so many people are fooled. So many people shake hands with the devil, sell their soul to the devil. Okay? Now here's one line. I will be satisfied if I am number one. Right? I'll be satisfied if I only if. See the only if. I'll be happy only if. Well, that's a lie. As long as you think only if, you'll, you'll never be happy. And the other lie is, and the other lie is that I don't need anybody, I have some all problems myself. I don't need God, I don't need church, I don't need friends. I can solve all problems for myself. That is the rugged individualism, right? I I solve all problems for myself. But that is that is the self deception. No one can solve all problems. Why? The basic fact is that no one is an island. Right? We are part of humanity. We are part of a social ecology. We are made for each other. 
were wired for each other. And people without healthy relationship, without secure attachment, they cannot be ha healthy and happy because we're wired that, that way. We, we, we need, we all need each other. That's why the meetup is so successful in everywhere. But people need people. They're not satisfied with just Facebook you know, or, or Twitter to have face to face interaction. We not only need wire for each other, we are wired for God. That's the spiritual need. So when people say that I do not need anyone, that one is the biggest fool. Right, that's the biggest fool. The last one is also a lie, it said the quality of life thing. If life is full of suffering, then I better kill myself. That's not worth living. So, so if you lose your ability to, to, to I, mean, I, I, I was really, really sad when I was teaching a train. One of my students was a trapping big fellow, 65, healthy and strong. He was doing thesis, doing a thesis with me. So we met every week. And his topic is about um, resilience, how to be resilient. Okay. and how to be an overcomer, and how to rise above stick. I was sick to my stomach when I learned a newspaper paper that he killed himself by throwing himself in a railroad track. Mm. And he never completely sees this. Because he learned he suffered from a degenerative disease. I don't know, M M M what's that? MS. MS, MS, yeah. Mm -hmm. He can't see himself become degenerate, become, you know. He can face, he can face. And another professor, another person, one of my PhD, a year of T, the, the head of the computer science department, you know, all the math department, is a very distinguished looking man, you know. Very distinguished looking. Very successful and very smart. Hey. And uh, he went professor. He too committed suicide. Because he lost his wife. His wife died of cancer. Mm. And he didn't he didn't look he didn't know didn't know what to do with himself. So he killed himself. So he he can't handle the loneliness, the pain. So if, if everybody killed himself because of pain or of suffering or frustration or what happened to humanity, right? Yeah. Which I just completed a, a paper about resilience. Right? See, actually, when we go through trouble, we become stronger. What does not kill you because you're stronger? So if you go with pain and suffering, I'll kill myself. That's never a solution. But the student has uh, the sickness, right? The disease that he, maybe he's not, does not recognize that he has the problem. He just killed himself. No, he discovered, he was he told the doctor, he had this uh, degenerative, de degenerative disease, no cure, right? Right. Mm -hmm. He can't imagine himself become paralyzed. Uh, uh, so he just, he just threw himself, he didn't talk to me, he just killed himself. If he, if he talked to me, we were able to discuss that there are options, there, there, there's a hope, right? But I didn't have a chance to talk to him. He just killed himself. And I wish I could talk to my professor too. I said, when well, you lose your vibe, that's not the end of, that's not the end of the world. Right? That's not the end of the world. He killed himself. He's a very handsome guy. You know, you know, famous and good looking, you know, successful. But he loved his wife so much, he can't allow live without her. Yeah. So I'm just saying that, you know, this, uh, uh, so what we learn here is that 
they, they, they will always be suffering in your life, right? But there's a way to grow from that. There's a way of finding meaning and, and grow from your experience. That's right. Now, here's the, here the famous calculus of the good life. Not, not developed by Einstein, but developed by yours, yours truly. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you have the, the, the yeah, in your hand out there. Yeah. So, so in order to in order to achieve, yeah, in order to achieve a good life, you need to talk solve a series of simultaneous equations. Okay. Yeah, so all these equations, in order to achieve the okay. life. The fourth equation is A, is about who you are. You want to know something, you want to know who you are, what you have, your, sim your present circumstances. You have to take, take stock for yourself. You have to know your strengths, your weaknesses, and your potentialities. And you have to look about yourself so that you can do something with what you have. Okay? Everybody can do something with what they have. You can't say, oh, well, I'll do something only if I finish my university, or only if I get my degree, or even that I'm thinking, the only if thinking will ruin you, right? The right way thinking is that I will do something with my life with whatever I have. Okay? I'll do something with, you know, I may not have education, I may not be uh, healthy, I may not be young. I'll do something with what I have. And that will be a good beginning. And the Chinese the power say, a journey of thousand miles began with one step. Right? And two days ago, the lady made the news. She got a degree from university at age of 81. Right? You go, girl. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you now. Yeah, you go, girl. <laughs> what? For right? her, she has. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, for her, she has. No, because I'm, she said, I'm old, I'm this, I'm that, but I want to do something with what's still left in my life. I want to go back to school. Before I have children and help my husband with the business, I deprive myself of the opportunity to go to school. Now is my time. Nobody can stop me. Nobody can stop me. She did what she got to do, right? That's it. Starting with where you are. It's never too late to change. It's never too late. It's never too late. You know, you can start a second career, a third career. You can start, turn a new chapter. You know, I was... Uh, I was at a conference in, in Concordia. Uh, that conference about uh, sexual abuse which in the church, okay? Most people out there are, are experts about, survive, about surviving sexual abuse or other survivors. That, there's one woman, that one woman, she's a professor now, okay? I, I, I never can never forget the intensity, the intensity of her emotion. She said, "I never thought about being abused by my priest, my pastor." She said that the whole her whole world fell apart. She, she the, the pain and the anger within me, they cry out every day. And her life was paralyzed. 
She went to see therapy, and one therapy on another therapy, but she never gave up. So she went to university, get a degree, get a PhD, devoted her, 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 her whole research area into studying, you know, sexual abuse. Now, here's something, she did not allow her pain to stop her from making her life better and make other people's life better. Now, sometimes I was asking, yesterday I was asking, I said, while in Peterborough, I, I, I work with poor people. I've helped with many poor people. You know, help them to find a job, help them to do translation for them. So I work with many poor people. Before my own eyes, I saw them, how they get established, you know, and, you know, doing well, and one family. So I help him to set up a little pools in the, in the farmer's market, sell acres. It's not equal. And now he, he owns a big store, a Chinese store in, in, in Scarborough. He owns houses, you know, all children, professionals. I saw acres in, in, in the farmer's market in Peterborough. Saturday the morning. Then I, I said, so I asked my friend, I said, why is that that some of the, some of the operational people Still struggling. They, speak, they have no language handicap. They speak English. These Vietnamese people, they don't speak English. They all maybe because of uh, the residential school abuse, you know. I said, we cannot be just because the, the abuse took place, because experience of discrimination and abuse. Then for generation after generation, you get stuck there. You don't move forward. Oh, I was abused. So we just have to, 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 to say, move from here to D, from A to D.